Hi, my name is Paolo Dello Vicario and I'm from Italy. I'm CEO of Vitec and partner of Datrix. We are an augmented analytics group of companies that works in marketing, publishing and finance industries. During my speech, we will go through a particular type of data, the search engine query data. We learn how to retrieve and use this data to evaluate market and trends of user interest. I really hope it will be useful for you in order to navigate through Uncentin. So, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Paolo Dello Vicario, and today we will go through, as I mentioned, uh, the search query data from search engines. Uh, I'm not a data scientist. I'm a CEO of a performance marketing and artificial intelligence company. And so I'm basically uh, someone who works with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, but who work who use artificial intelligence and natural language processing tools in order to make business. Uh, today we'll go through uh, search query data. We'll go through. Uh, search engine data, and we'll uh, try to find what are the and to to know what are the methodologies and data you can use to analyze market and predict trends. They something quite useful in these times in these times of high volatility uh, in which we, uh, we we are interested in in search. What are the interests? of people and what are the insights we can extract from market. And we'll go through some uh, natural language processing and uh, text classification libraries you can use in order to achieve this goal of getting insight from user searches. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Paolo Dello Vicario. I'm CEO of, of Bytec. This is a performance marketing company, a market company who uh, develop um, uh, softwares and solutions uh, with artificial intelligence for performance marketing and partnering with Datrix. That is the group uh, that develop um, applications of artificial intelligence for customer intelligence uh, and publishing that uh, is the group from uh, Bytec belongs to. Uh, I'm also coordinator of the Master MIPS in the University of Tusha, Master in Artificial Intelligence for Business Applications and Securities, and the Growth Hacking Master in Talent Garden is the leading co-working space in Europe. And uh, I organize the uh, Growth Hacking Master in, for, in Italy uh, for that school. Um, in today's speech, we'll go through uh, the topic of search data, and we'll go through these topics in using in three different steps. The fourth one is the context. So we'll analyze what is the scenario in which we are, we are uh, living today. Uh, what are the uh, main trends we are seeing as users in this market? And what are the uh, new technologies that Google and other tech giants are introducing in the market in these days? And that's something quite uh, um, important, quite uh, um, interesting in our case, because uh, these tech giants are moving fast in developing, changing user behavior, in changing the way in which we are uh, actually um, uh, dealing uh, with search, we are dealing with um, uh, with uh, finding information online and so uh, in, in in the way we are uh, searching for for new data and we are generating data that analysts could extract and analyze uh, the second part is about data sources so uh, starting from the context the scenario we will describe in the first part we'll go through the different data sources you can use, such as the uh, search query data and internal external, so for example, from Google, Amazon, and other search engines, and internal to so website search. We go through uh, the types of data uh, you, you can analyze, and we'll see uh, what are the methodology and endpoints you can use to extract this data uh, fast and uh, in, uh, in a cheap way. Uh, and on the third part, uh, we'll go through the opportunities. So starting from data sources and context, we'll see 
uh, what are the uh, types of analysis and applications you can uh, you, you, you can uh, start to to deal with tomorrow uh, what are many applications we try to do uh, in in this year and some libraries you can use to use this data to extract insights and make decision take decisions starting from this data uh, let's start with the context uh, in these days uh, the context is really important because um, search, the way we are searching for queries, the way we are interacting as a users uh, with search engines and people is interesting in, is interacting with search engines in these days is fastly, uh, is, is changing rapidly. Uh, it's changing rapidly because uh, we are changing the way uh, we interact with different devices. Devices is changing. Uh, and um, the, um, uh, the, the the search is changing because of we ask uh, for different information uh, to search. Ten years ago, twenty years ago, uh, we we search in Google. We searched in Google uh, in order to find ten different results. Uh, today, we are searching in Google to find direct, to directly find answers, or maybe to to ask Google some tasks. Uh, and that's. Uh, the, the, the starting point uh, today. Uh, I don't know if anyone, if anyone of you uh, have uh, seen this uh, this image in the past. Uh, that's the, um, uh, the the representation of the Google Duplex application that Sandra Pichai, former CEO of uh, Google and Alphabet, shared at the Google I/O conference two years ago. And that's the new technology that helps Google uh, to, um, to, to interact with users and to um, empower the Google Assistant, so the technology that is inside the smart speakers, in order to um, add new functionalities, add new features that helps both users and small businesses to interact without any real direct interaction. Uh, I'll, I will show you the video and then we'll go through the other part of the speech. The progress with the assistant. As I said earlier, our vision for our assistant is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, you know, we are working, are working hard, hard to help users, users through those moments. moments. We, we want, want to connect users to businesses in a good, good way. way. Businesses, businesses actually rely a lot on this, this but even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't, don't have an online, online booking system set up. We think, we think AI, AI can help with this problem. problem. So, let's so let's go back to this example. example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make, to make you a haircut appointment, appointment on, Tuesday on Tuesday between 10 and, 10 and noon. What, what happens is the, is the Google, Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. For you. So what so you're going to hear is the, is the Google, Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule, to schedule the appointment for you. For you. Let's, Let's listen. listen. Hi, I'm calling to look for your haircut for a client. Um, I'm, looking I'm looking for something, something on May 3rd. 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for now? At 12 p.m. We, we do not have a 12 p.m. Available. available. The closest we have, we have to that is a 1.15. You have anything between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m.? Depending, Depending on, on what service, service she would, she would like, like, what service is she looking for? for? Just, Just a woman's haircut, haircut for now. now. Okay, okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. fine. Okay, okay, what's your first name? name? The first, first name, name is Lisa. Lisa. Okay, okay, perfect. So, so I will see Lisa, Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, okay great. 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 Have, have a great day. day. Bye. I don't want to focus on technology on this video. We'll go through the technology for the 
keyword research and analysis in the second part of the speech, but I want to focus on how this kind of technology is changing our way to search for and to use technology, search technology uh, in everyday life. Um, because today we are, in, we are in, in, introducing, sorry, or we are uh, using uh, our different smart speakers in, in our home, in our lives. Uh, in we are probably using a laptop or a computer to look at this talk uh, and to work every day to search in search engines uh, uh, with every every kind uh, of activity questions and problem uh, every day. Oh, we are using uh, the smartphones and we uh, we use search engines to answer our little, our specific questions every day in every moment of our days. And maybe we are also collecting data using smartwatches and other smart devices that is connected to the internet. And that's something right, really interesting as analysts because uh, this kind of devices, this kind of interaction generate uh, of a lot of data about us, about our behavior, about our interests, about our debt. Uh, one topic um, before starting to 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 think to uh, to um, expand the, the the talk uh, as an as an analyst as about opportunities of analysis. I will I want to show you uh, as a user. Uh, what are the opportunities and what are the power of this kind of data? You have uh, two different types uh, of history of navigate the uh, of your uh, navigation uh, directly into Google into your Google account. Uh, you have the navigation history uh, where you can find the uh, your um, uh, your navigation over the globe uh, directly into Google Maps. Uh, so you you can search for for it directly into the app or in the on the on or into the web app, and you can find your uh, different locations you you visited over over the time uh, in each part of your day. That Google overlap and Google overlap your your moves over the globe uh, with the uh, database of locations and small businesses in order to find what are your interests rest what are your activities uh, in each day of your life and on the other hand you have another uh, imp important uh, history it's your search history a place uh, if you look at search history on, on Google, uh, the search history is a place where you can find all the search queries you performed on Google over the year. And that's an important thing because Google is actually where we confess. We confess our depths. Uh, we search in Google for questions to our depths. Uh, we search in Google for questions to our problems. Uh, we, we search for every kind of questions over our life. And that's uh, something really uh, spectacular when we try to analyze our questions in order to uh, be aware of the power of this data on us and then trying to analyze other people's searches. I try to do that. And with Selenium, Python, uh, and, uh, and on, I scraped my, uh, my Google search history in a specific month of my life. Uh, and I tried to represent the search queries I extracted with a simple word cloud. Uh, is, uh, and I really didn't remember what are my interests, my dad, my fears in this specific part of my life uh, and in this um, particular part of my life and I found out uh, that uh, Google remember more than me. It remembered that I said I, I said for uh, OKR, um, the objective and key result methodology for managed company. Uh, so I, I was out for vacation, so uh, I, I was searching for trail, I was searching for weather, I was searching for many other keywords that I to Google. And it represents, it represents with a, a high 
uh, level of detail my fears. I, it rep represents with high level of details my depths in, in that specific part of my life. So that's one, uh, that's, the, that's a view of my life. But uh, what if we can extract data about other people and analyze it? And that's the topic of this talk. Uh, because we can extract data about user searches from many different search engines. Uh, we can extract data from Google. This is the main search engine in the world, search engine in the world. And uh, we have we will focus on that, and we have many different data sources we can use to extract what people is actually searching for on Google uh, in different ways. But uh, we we can also extract today we will focus on Google, but the same methodology could be used also on other search engines because, for example, Amazon is probably the main search engine for transactional queries and for shopping queries, and and it's particularly interesting in order to. Uh, extract information about what people actually want to buy. Um, we have, if we manage a big website with many visitors, with many uh, sessions every day, we can extract data about user searches directly from Google Analytics, maybe with the new Google Analytics 4, it's possible to extract from Google Analytics to Google BigQuery, there's the uh, managed database from Google, uh, the, uh, the data at a single hit level. So you can um, extract information about each single action people is actually uh, performing on your website and analyzing it, uh, querying the database directly into SQL uh, language or uh, with a Python SDK. And uh, with YouTube, it, something similar uh, with YouTube analytics. If you have uh, a, a, a channel, you can uh, find what you can look at the queries that people is using to reach you uh, and find your videos and your channel. But let's focus on Google. Um, in Google, we have three different methodologies to extract data. We have, we have more than three different methodologies. We, we can also use external party uh, data, uh, uh, external party data sources, but um, I will show you the free data sources you can use uh, after this page. Uh, and there are basically three different data sources. The first one is the Google suggestion data source. So uh, basically when you search in, um, uh, in Google, uh, the, when you type a query in the search bar in Google directly into Google, uh, you will find the um, um, a list of suggestion that is based on the Google language model. So starting from a keyword, you, uh, Google will show you uh, six different suggest suggestion of different keywords. So if you concatenate this keyword, your keyword, your starting seed keyword with a one, uh, a, a, another letter of the alphabet and another letter of the alphabet, you can find tons of different uh, suggestion related to a single keyword. So if you um, concatenate your keyword with Y and with other prepositions, uh, you can find many other queries about questions and answers. Uh, so uh, the idea behind it is that uh, uh, a Google, uh, an endpoint to extract this keyword directly into XML format is, uh, is available and you can automate it. So uh, if you look at the, the this endpoint, you can extract keywords directly from from Google and you can generate uh, ideas uh, using the language model that Google built on core currencies uh, that be of, of keywords into the databases and on user searches over uh, the over over Google itself it's something like a reverse engineering of Google itself and you can extract a keyword that people is actually searching for but in, in this case, th this kind of endpoint is really useful to extract what people are searching for, but without any information about uh, how many searches uh, is related, how many people search for each single keyword, you know, how many people is searching for each single query. <laughs> You can use two different tools in order to extract this, uh, this kind of data. You can also use Google Trends as a Python package you can use is PyTrends, but um, it's just scraping, so uh, it's it's another it's another topic. Uh, you can use two uh, two official tool. There are Google Search Console, 
if you own a website with a huge number of visits every day, uh, you can extract for, di for uh, this website um, some metrics like click impression, average rank, uh, and click through rate is a metric that uh, compare click and impressions uh, and with different dimensions. So page, query, devices, and country. So if you own uh, maybe a big publisher, uh, you can extract uh, the, the queries that people are searching for uh, for the for this website where the the the, the newspaper ranks for uh, and get many insights about that query. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is another official tool. There is the Google the Google Ads Keyword Planner tool. Uh, and on the other, uh, as a developer, you can access it uh, through the link I show you. In the bottom part of this slide is the traffic estimator service. Uh, if you own um, Python, uh, um, an endpoint, uh, a token uh, to, to access this data, you can create it for free. If you own some campaign right into, into Google Ads, you can extract um, the search volume for which way you want uh, and filter uh, the data for country, region, language, and split it in different dimensions, query, month, and year. So uh, you can have information about how many searches is performed by users in a specific country uh, over the last 36 months uh, and analyze this data. Uh, but very simple, this is where we can extract data, but we have some problem because uh, generally, uh, it's really difficult to analyze a market uh, only starting from keywords because uh, to describe um, an average industry, uh, as for example, cosmetics, uh, you'll need something like 1 million different keywords. Uh, and that's the spreadsheet, the example of a spreadsheet that consultant and SEO specialists, so people who is dealing with this kind of data uh, are, are using to analyze uh, keywords. You have the keyword, you have the volume, so the number of, of searches that people is um, performing on Google each single month for that single keyword. Um, and these two first columns are something that you can extract with these with the API I showed you in the previous slides. But you will have also other columns, is the, the classifications column that you need to to, to build ma basically manually. And that's a problem. That's a problem because uh, you you will approach to this uh, to this uh, classification task in in different ways. Um, in in the most in most cases, um, the update is. Uh, are extremely expensive because of uh, uh, this kind of classification is meant manually because it's difficult to classify keywords uh, based only on there are not um, specific documents uh, but that that uh, introduce many problems of classifications uh, and so generally you will perform the classification task manually and the updates uh, are really expensive. So they, this kind of analysis is really updated and uh, you lose, if you update it uh, once a year or monthly on, on a monthly basis, you will lost you will lose the speed of action so if you if you are looking for trends but you update the analysis once a month uh, it will be difficult to be first on a trend before your competition uh, the, on the other hand um, we the, the, the specialists the consultants uh, try to avoid this problem um, choosing only a subset of keywords maybe 1000 keywords and updating it uh, every every month but limiting our analysis to a subset uh, we lose visibility on the opportunities we talk about keywords and not about teams. Uh, and the the problem is that if one new keyword emerges, if if it exists a new trend, 
uh, about one new keyword, about you know, one new query, it's difficult to find it. And the third problem uh, with the manual approach is that the, there is a difficult link between, between strategy and execution because generally if you, uh, if you deal with the problem manually, uh, the, the strategy, that is the information about what are the market trend, uh, are difficult, uh, there is a, um, is difficult to link the uh, strategy and the market overview to the actions because the actions are basically driven by the single specific keyword that is increasing in volume, there is, in there is a trending keyword. So for example, if people is searching for a specific type of wine and we are analyzing wine market, uh, we will um, create a content maybe or create a campaign uh, or generate an email uh, toward our, our users, but it's difficult to link. If the data are not linked, uh, it's difficult to, to, to link uh, the, 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 the wine trends and the specific wine uh, trend we found and the action that is related to the two analysis we made. So we need to link the data and generate one analysis that um, help us in order to start from the uh, bottom level, so from the keyword level uh, up to the uh, market overview level in order to link strategy and execution uh, directly. Uh, and that's possible with some automation. Uh, you can, uh, we, we, we tried to do that in this month uh, and uh, we noticed that uh, um, fast way to do that is to use um, RNN, so recurrent neural networks linked to the um, to some uh, pre-trained embeddings from Facebook, Google, and Stanford. The best one is probably the fast text embeddings from Facebook. So uh, if you are not aware of the embeddings, uh, it's basically uh, a methodology to vectorize uh, the words. So uh, in this principal components analysis, each single word in our vocabulary is represented by uh, a single point into the, into the chart. Uh, and uh, the, the position, the, the, the elements of the, of the vector that we use to represent each single keyword is based on the co-occurrences, the correlation of position uh, of uh, each single uh, keyword uh, of each single word in a corpus of text that we've used for training um, to, to, to find the, the right position of, of each word. Fast text is the algorithm that, that is the, uh, sorry, embeddings that uh, Facebook uh, introduced some years ago, um, starting from uh, Wikipedia uh, corpus of documents and uh, the common crawl, there's another big database of crawling, of crawling all over the web. Um, if, you, um, if you apply the vectorization with fast text, for example, you can apply many properties of vectors uh, directly to, uh, to, to the words. So you can cluster them and find a cluster of uh, words that, that, that are countries. And you can apply transformation to these words in order to, to find uh, other words. So for example, this vector uh, is the um, capital vector, uh, for example, and if we apply the transformation, this transformation to Italy, we find Rome. If we apply the same transformation to France, we'll find Paris. There are many properties typical of vectors, but we apply them to, to words. So the idea behind it is to use this kind of classification in order to start the training of our algorithm. So we generate with it, with the expansion of keywords, well, the language from the language model of Google, we will um, extract we will extract many keywords from our database, uh, and um, we will 
um, uh, generate a database, a list of keywords. So a keyword, uh, the, the volume, and a seasonality array for the last 36 months. Um, then we separate the, we, we split our database in two parts. Uh, a part that will, that a specialist, a consultant, a person will classify, but a little part that is our that will be our labeled uh, sample and uh, another part that will be the the target of our training of our uh, of our algorithm uh, then we will train we will train our algorithm is basically a, a long short term memory uh, recurrent neural network. There is a particular type of recurrent neural network that is uh, really interesting for classify and represent uh, the uh, sequences data, um, starting from the fast text embeddings. We 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 built it with uh, with Keras. We prototyped it with Keras um, and. Uh, train we if we train this kind of uh, recurrent neural net on the on, on our label data we can add the classification of a new label so to our data uh, with a high accuracy level um, we, we start from 96 percent but we will we, our in in some cases we uh, we target also 99 percent for for this kind of data and so basically the structure of the recurrent neural net is something similar. Uh, an embedding layer that we will not train with our training uh, with a training phase when we'll train the the, the, the algorithm to a uh, long short term memory um, RNNs uh, layers and one uh, dense layer, the output layer with a softmax activation function uh, where the dimension of the number of category we want to use to classify keywords. So so the number of labels we found on the on the training set, uh, and did this kind of activity, this kind of approach, lead us to uh, will lead will lead us to a uh, um, uh, automatic automatic classification of our keyword set. So we only classify um, the, uh, the 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 first part of data, and then we'll release to the other part. Uh, then uh, we will have uh, an updated data set uh, about user searches. Uh, what we can do with that uh, if we update it very fast and we, if we have an insight about, insight about uh, millions and millions of different queries. The first application uh, is the simple analysis on a single market. So that's an example in wine sector, in wine industry. Um, so for example, we can analyze wine industry and find what are the categories that uh, are the main categories of searches for a specific industry. So name, typology of wine, uh, accessories, and other. Uh, you can analyze the seasonality uh, and the seasonality for each single category. Uh, so, for example, in France, there is a high seasonality level. Uh, on, uh, there is a peak that has a peak of interest in um, all, uh, near Christmas. In Italy, we have a completely different uh, behavior from users, and um, you can find also a margin trend. So, categories that is actually not seen in the general scenario but there are increasing volumes so for example uh this this the single type of uh, uh of grapes that people are searching for um and you can use the facebook profit uh library in order to predict uh, trends in future and find outliers in in our uh, in our uh, in the behavior of the single of, of the single trend uh, if you have many other uh, keywords, if you have a huge database, so for example, uh, from if you look at data for SEO, there is a website you can extract data from. You you will uh, you can extract something like sixty five millions of different que queries that are representative of total user searches in the US for people, uh, but you, you can also extract from other countries the, a huge number of queries. And if you have uh, 
a huge number of data for a specific country uh, and this, uh, your data set is very large, it's possible to analyze near real time the interests for entire industries and themes. We did that, uh, th th this kind of analysis during the first part of lockdown uh, in the Italy and in the US uh, and generate you different analysis I linked directly into this slide and find out, uh, found out that uh, for example, during the first part of lockdown in Italy, the interest for children literature uh, was increasing in uh, in, uh, in in volume uh, over sing every single day before the uh, we we seen the increase uh, in uh, in sales about uh, children literature because people were searching for uh, for entertainment entertainment for their children and uh, they, they they used to, to buy um, many uh, new books and children literature for their children and we can find it before uh, we can track this kind of behavior with other with other part with other type of data so act starting from this data um, if we cluster uh, if we if we cluster and analyze um, the same industry on different countries with the same categories, uh, we can also use a high hierarchical model of clustering uh, in order to and that's a dendrogram to do that um, to uh, cluster countries of regions together. So that's an example of the wine industry. Uh, and we cluster, uh, in this example, we cluster different countries together um, if the user searches are similar. So for example, uh, Italian friends search for wine in the same way, UK, US have another way uh, to, to, to interact and to search for uh, wine industry and wine teams. So you can find such similarity uh, across different regions and trans similarity about different re regions uh, if you use a hierarchical model to cluster uh, different, the different countries. And this is really helpful if you want to, in, to, 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 to go to new markets market uh, with a new product in order to maybe um, have the same communication, have the same strategy in different countries and to uh, spend less uh, in order to, to target new markets, uh, aggregating your strategy and your team. Uh, but uh, is is not only an high level analysis. The because because we we are starting from uh, um, from keyword data, so we can deep dive for each country in different categories and find why one region, one country is linked to another country in the clustering in the clustering analysis. Uh, and uh, on the final step, uh, we will we can find trends so we can have we can perform uh, both the um, dynamic the, the static analysis about the market and the dynamic analysis if we link the data to the google trends data and we can and we update uh, the data every day we can for example um, search for new trends that is exploding that is increasing in such volume every single day we use it uh, for for publishers for example or uh, we can extract the same kind of data on our e-commerces, classify them and find trends about user searches on our e-commerce, for example, before seeing any behavior in terms of, um, of, of sales, in terms of real business uh, metrics. So such data uh, is basically uh, something that is everywhere. We can we have really search systems everywhere and we can interrogate them. We can reading heat with different perspectives. Uh, we can do on this data many analysis. We search the query data is extremely interesting. It's easily accessible because from your data from Google Analytics is easy to export. It's easy, it's easy to analyze. You need only to cluster this kind of data in order to make sense to the data in order to um, generate some aggregation that helps you to uh, analyze the data that is uh, really granular uh, in uh, in terms of detail. Uh, 
and and it has very thousands uh, of different applications. And nowadays, thanks to Google Advance and Facebook Advance in search in research in the last years, is something emerged in last two or three years. Um, the analysis, the algorithm you can use uh, without any uh, effort, uh, is extremely are extremely advanced. Uh, you can apply them uh, in a really easy way to your data, and your um, your effort will be only in only in train the data set and find the right application for for your case. Thank you for for be here. Thank you for for the questions. Uh, I will have. Uh, one some minutes more to to answer to to your question. So, uh, is it possible uh, that using extracted data will oversaturate online advertisement uh, to that extent to possible customers because desensitized uh, of it? Uh, one moment. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, could you repeat the, the questions? I, I, I didn't get the question, sorry. Uh, I, I will answer to the second question, meanwhile, is how to reach the right balance between privacy, security, user trust, and corporate data. Um, on this level, um, uh, as as Google said, you 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 will extract um, only anonymous data about users. Uh, for example, um, on the, the the Google data, uh, you, you will extract from Google and other search engines are only aggregated data, so you cannot find who is the person that is actually searching for a specific query, and you will extract data uh, only for queries that are searched more than 10 times for each month. So you, you will not have name or, uh, or any other personal data about users. You can have information only about uh, what are the keywords that people is actually searching for. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you try to analyze the data of your website, uh, two topics we need to mention. The the first one uh, is that um, the uh, when you extract data from Google Analytics for data into BigQuery, uh, you will have um, only information uh, about the cookie uh, of the of the person. So uh, nowadays, is it pos it's possible to target people based on on user search. So that, that's something uh, that leads to, to some privacy problem if you want. Uh, but um, you will analyze data only on aggregate level as Google as the Google data. Uh, in future, uh, it will be difficult to identify users because um, the, the third party cookie uh, is probably near to death. Uh, so, uh, but you will you will analyze this kind of data uh, in aggregate way, uh, and that's uh, that's really uh, that's something really uh, important in this kind of analysis. So uh, you will never uh, use this kind of data to to find what is the interest of a single user. So if you If there are no other questions, so thank you for being here. Uh, if you want to, uh, I will connect also to the Zoom room uh, if you if you want. But if you want, uh, here you'll find also my email in order to uh, to 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 reach me for other questions and that's. So thank you for your time, and have a great day.